For quite a while, people have envisioned what life might be like in other universes. Because of the James Webb Space Telescope, the most remarkable telescope in presence, that question can at last be answered. While noticing the nearest star framework to us, Proxima Centauri, which is just four light years away, researchers have seen several unconventional irregularities from one of the planets in the framework, Proxima b. These oddities, called fake lights, have confused the best minds in mainstream researchers. Yet what are they? Do these lights recommend the presence of smart life on the planet? Go along with us as we investigate James Webb's startling disclosure of city lights that change everything. The main life that we are presently mindful of is on Earth. Since the start of development, individuals have addressed whether there is life somewhere else in the universe. To do such an interstellar hunt, American cosmologists Jill Tarter and Thomas Pearson sent off the quest for extraterrestrial knowledge, SETI project in 1984. The not-for-profit's objective is to assemble space-borne radio transmissions. Radio waves can travel farther and are along these lines bound to be recognized by the 42 radio telescopes that make up the extraordinary Allen Telescope Cluster in the Californian Fountain Mountains, on the grounds that they are less scattered or ingested than different kinds of radiation. Yet, before 30 years, no certain outsider sign has been found. After that, the James Webb Space Telescope progressed in its send-off supported the journey to look at a scope of distances of unseen planets circling faraway stars. The largest telescope on the planet, which is drifting about one million miles from Earth and furnished with staggeringly delicate detectors, will be utilized. Quite a while back, there were no known planets outside those in our solar system. However, from that point forward, more than 4,000 more planets, additionally alluded to as exoplanets, have been found circling different stars. As per NASA, the universe might contain trillions of exoplanets. The earliest indications of something going on under the surface past our local planet group might be viewed as extraterrestrial vegetation. The Galileo shuttle turned its gear back toward Earth when it was in transit to Jupiter and tracked down a positive sign of the presence of vegetation. The instrument detected the vegetation red edge, a blend of red and infrared lights reflected by plants. For example, a planet like Earth that is canvassed in a wilderness ought to have major areas of strength for an easy-to-identify red edge. The JWST will measure the red edge of faraway Earth-like planets in the tenable zone around stars. They could be significant indications of something going on under the surface in the exoplanet climate. When sunlight crosses a planet star, the JWST might have the option to recognize it as it enters its air. The light's missing frequencies would then be found through spectroscopy. Particles and atoms in the air ingest explicit frequencies, making a trademark unique finger impression that the JWST can perceive. This strategy might be utilized to decide the composition of the environment and whether life is conceivable. Almost certainly, life could exist on Earth-sized planets with climates like our own, with the prevalence of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. By searching for components that aren't usually present, one might have the option to distinguish mechanical life. Chlorocarbons, CFCs, created for use in refrigeration and cleaning items, would presumably be perceptible to outsider monitoring Earth's environment from a good ways. If the JWST tracked down CFCs in planetary environments, that would be an obvious sign of progress. Really, Life on exoplanets probably won't in any capacity whatsoever look like life on Earth. Sometimes even natural life like extremophile species can appear to be alien. This is a gathering of life forms, basically microscopic organisms, that can persevere in conditions where other residing things would die. A few people can endure heat up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, some can endure colds as low as 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and some of them can make do in solid acids with pH levels under 3, while others can be seen as on Earth in where we wouldn't anticipate finding any life whatsoever. Yet, since planets like Earth are bound to help life than planets with serious temperatures or acidic circumstances, it very well may be a decent thought to begin with those first. Prime competitors could have temperatures that permit liquid water to exist on their surfaces and circle a steady star. The grouping for our Sun is a yellow G-type star. These stars are more uncommon and naturally have shorter life expectancies. In our universe, the probability of considering planets circling around red small stars, which are more frequent and have lower radiances and temperatures than the sun, is higher. 
there is additional opportunity for the arrangement of life and advancement to produce complex life structures because these stars have longer life expectancies. Fundamentally, around 40 light years away from Earth, the TRAPPIST-1 planetary framework will be the subject of JWST's first mission. It revolves around a quiet red small star with seven Earth-sized rough planets. Three of the rough planets in the supposed livable zone could have liquid water on their surfaces. The TRAPPIST-1 star, regardless of having a much smaller and colder mass than our Sun, emanates light that is like that of Earth because of the shut circle of its planets. The most obvious opportunity for people to see city life outside the solar system is Proxima Centauri, a red midget star that is 4.25 light years from the Sun and our closest star. Proxima is multiple times fainter than the Sun, so that a planet should be multiple times nearer to it than Earth is to the Sun for it to help life because of liquid water. In August 2016, space experts found a planet with 1.3 times the mass in this tenable region in a Goldilocks like zone where the light force is perfect to liquefy water. Proxima B circles Proxima Centauri. It's conceivable that Proxima B is an airless, dormant planet considering that it circles its red small star, Proxima Centauri, at a distance of just 46 million miles. The planet Proxima B is in a close circle that opens it to solid sunlight-based breezes that can completely annihilate its air. It additionally provides enough sunlight for temperatures and liquid water that are like those on Earth. Due to its closeness to the star, Proxima B is believed to be tidally locked, continuously showing a similar side to the star as the moon truly does in reference to Earth. Proxima Centauri is around 18% the mass of the sun and consumes undeniably less splendidly than one could expect for a planet so close to its star. Only 5% of the world's sun distance, which might be expected to be a scorching soot. Fluid water could without much of a stretch exist on Proxima B as long as the planet has an environment to warm it, since the aggregate energy arriving at it from the Sun is as it were 65% of what Earth gets. Anyway, the planet isn't particularly cordial to life. It is probably tidally locked, which implies that it generally faces a similar direction toward the star and produces extremely durable constantly sides with critical temperature changes. The planet likewise gets 100-fold the amount of high-energy radiation as Earth does due to its vicinity to Proxima Centauri, including X-beams and bright lights. Proxima B is likewise assaulted with high-energy particles during star eruptions. Except if it has a safeguarding attractive field like Earth, however, there are sure reasonable circumstances that could make it a pleasant world. Tragically, models suggest that the climate of tidally locked planets might be helpless to a rapid breakdown due to the freezing out of unpredictable gases on the night side. A planet's atmosphere can be renewed by volcanic activity, and for planets with solid attractive fields, this atmosphere is more averse to get away. Since we know nothing about Proxima B's volcanic activity or attractive field strength, we can't even surmise whether the planet has an atmosphere. Since an air surmises the presence of oceans and the two taken together surmise the presence of life, we are frantic to know whether Proxima B has a modern civilization. It could have sunlight-based chargers covering the day side to produce power to light and warm the evening side which would some way or another be excessively cold and dark for comfortable home. The disclosure of Proxima B has set off a competition to decide if it travels its star's face as seen from Earth. These travels would allow researchers to decide the planet's size and mass, which would then enable them to decide its thickness. Knowing that would validate the planet's rough makeup and give information on the materials used to make those stones. During a travel, starlight could uncover the idea of the planet by going through its atmosphere, Yet the probability that the circle will be in the right arrangement for researchers to see a travel is just 15%. The star's affinity to erupt likewise entangles matters. Stargazer David Kipping of Columbia College says the star is interesting, as star's heat makes a rocky planet absorb sunlight and transmit it as infrared light. However, rocky planets produce a particular sort of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima and Pinnacle. Furthermore, the James Webb Space Telescope was made explicitly to concentrate on infrared light. Proxima B's infrared intensity mark is the way to recognizing the planet's atmosphere. Moreover, the infrared piece of the range has serious areas of strength for a liking for water. The JWST will be capable to notice city lights on Proxima B's night side. Regardless of whether they were all around as weak as what our civilization presently utilizes on the night side of Earth, we could recognize counterfeit light as lengthy. 
as it was obliged to a recurrence band that is multiple times smaller than the starlight. Proxima B's dayside is vigorously covered with sunlight-based chargers because of its remarkable ghastly edges capacity to reflect starlight. As Proxima B spins around its star day in and day out are indistinguishable, with cool night lows following daytime highs. The distinction in temperature among constantly, anyway, relies upon whether the planet is fully made out of bare rock. Since a climate and ocean both direct intensity, as such, if there isn't an atmosphere, Proxima B's dayside and nightside temperatures will contrast more, as a matter of fact, since the dayside will transmit all of the energy it gets from Proxima Centauri as a dark body. We can ascertain the exact measure of dark body radiation that ought to be present on the nightside. On the other hand, the night side will look like a frozen type of agony if the temperature contrast among day and night is less articulated. We can gather the presence of an atmosphere helpfully if the day side and night side temperatures contrast. It will just take the JWST-11 Earth days to gauge the radiation from Proxima's two appearances after it has effectively finished its circle around the star. If Proxima B has an atmosphere, the subsequent step will be to examine its makeup. The presence of gases like oxygen, water vapor, and methane in specific could show the presence of livable conditions, if not genuine living things. To achieve this, however, we should effectively catch starlight as it skips off or goes through the planet's atmosphere, which is a very troublesome undertaking. However, JWST can intently look at in a couple of the nearest potentially livable universes. Since it was not worked to search for extraterrestrial life, furthermore, it is restricted to following changes in the climatic centralizations of methane, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. JWST is unfit to recognize the presence of unbonded oxygen, which is the strongest indication of something going on under the surface. Regardless of whether a few combinations of these gases might be reminiscent of life, one of the ground-based observatories that will actually want to conduct a thorough climatic examination is the Very Large Telescope which is planned to start activity in the center of the 2020s. Ozone might be among the substances that the JWST is capable of recognizing. Until those telescopes are functional, the JWST may give information that we can consider for a 10 years later. Much more impressive space telescopes might utilize frontline procedures to disguise the blinding brightness of a planet's host star and reveal starlight reflected back from the planet. Future space telescopes could do this by utilizing small internal masks or large external umbrella-shaped satellites. After starlight is hindered, focusing on light gleaming off a planet is a lot simpler. Unfortunately, most of the gas produced by Earthbound life can likewise be produced by non-organic factors. Methane is a gas that both cows and volcanoes release. Sunlight does this as well, as it changes over water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen through photosynthesis. When looking for alien life, space experts are sure to come across several misleading upsides. Space experts should have a thorough understanding of a planet of interest to assess whether its geologic or air processes potentially look like a biomark and help rule out misleading upsides. The next flood of exoplanet examination might produce the undeniable proof needed to lay out the truth of life. The James Webb Space Telescope's preliminary information provides us with a review of the critical headways to come. Assuming there is life elsewhere in the universe, it is one of science's most pressing questions. Is it conceivable that life is plentiful all through the universe? Or is it too conceivable that we are completely alone and caught on a single planet in profound space? Regardless, huge philosophical and mental changes among individuals will probably be fundamental for the inevitable goal. For a broad period, People have held onto fantastical minds about the expected presence of life on far off heavenly bodies. These thoughts, powered by scientific inquiry and speculative fiction the same, have long spellbound the human creative mind. However, it wasn't until the approach of momentous technological wonders, for example, the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, that the tempting chance of uncovering such extraterrestrial mysteries turned out to be more than simple guess. The JWST remains as a reference point of human inventiveness, addressing the zenith of observational ability. With its unparalleled capacities, it vows to upset how we might interpret the universe, permitting us to peer farther into the universe than any time in recent memory. Furnished with this mechanical wonder, researchers set their sights on the nearest star framework to our own, Proxima Centauri, arranged a simple four light years away. 
this astronomical neighbor coaxes with the appeal of disclosure. Inside the Proxima Centauri framework lies Proxima b, a planet covered in mystery and interest. It is here that researchers have recognized peculiar peculiarities, fake lights, giving occasion to feel qualms about uncertainty the ordinary insight of an infertile dormant breadth. These puzzling enlightenments have frustrated even the most splendid personalities within established researchers, igniting intense hypotheses about their origins and implications. Could these fake lights be harbingers of insightful life sneaking in the midst of the astronomical void? The very thought sends shock waves through the logical establishment, testing long-held presumptions about mankind's place in the universe. As specialists wrestle with this significant inquiry, the JWST stands ready to unwind the mysteries of Proxima B, offering glimpses into the obscure and possibly reshaping how we might interpret life's astronomical commonness. Yet, the quest for extraterrestrial knowledge expands a long way beyond the limits of our grandiose lawn. Since days of yore, people have looked heavenward, contemplating the presence of close companions among the stars. This mission for grandiose friendship tracked down re-established energy with the commencement of the quest for extraterrestrial knowledge, SETI, project initiated by visionary space experts Jill Tarter and Tom Pirin in 1984. Furnished with a variety of cutting-edge advances, SETI tries to scour the universe for indications of smart life, tackling the force of radio telescopes to filter through the huge breadth of room looking for slippery signals. Yet, Regardless of many years of indefatigable exertion, the astronomical quietness endures, passing on mankind to stand up to the unpleasant chance of its isolation in the universe. Enter the JWST, a sentinel of humankind's unquenchable interest, ready to puncture the cover of grandiose obscurity and shed light on the cryptic domains beyond our own. With its unmatched precision and awareness, it vows to uncover the unobtrusive clues of life amidst the tremendous expanse of the universe, offering trust notwithstanding existential vulnerability. As the JWST sets out on its odyssey of disclosure, it conveys with it the yearnings of previous eras and present, a reference point of trust in a universe overflowing with probability. From the ruby shores of Proxima B to the far-off compasses of unknown worlds, it remains as a demonstration of mankind's endless interest and unwavering soul of investigation. However, the mission for astronomical friendship isn't without its challenges. The immensity of room, coupled with the intrinsic limitations of our innovation, presents an imposing deterrent to generating a response.